What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman, The Time Teller, here with another unboxing and review for Microbrand Monday. Now today we're going to be taking a look at a watch from a Microbrand watchmaker that we've actually reviewed before, Axios. So let's go ahead, tell the time, and unbox this baby. It's 2.26 p.m. Let's get down to business. Look at this gorgeous Seiko Presage. All right, let's open this. All right, guys, so the digital calipers are out, but we're not gonna measure it immediately. Where's the flap? Okay. So we have uh, the Axios logo. We've seen that before on one of their other dive watches we took a look at. Now people like when I talk about the packaging, this is kind of a paper box. There's some nice check texturing on here and this is embossed or debossed. I forgot which one's which, but uh, you know, it's nicely pressed into that packaging. Um, let's see, I believe, yep, we flip this and surprise, surprise, we have a leather watch roll. Again, hyper common when we're taking a look at micro brands. For some reason, they all come with watch rolls, all right. So as we get a little closer to this watch roll, we see what appears to be probably like a warranty card. Uh, we can see it is actually, it's metal. Pretty thick gauge here. Uh, we see Axios and then what seems to be some movements here. In the back, uh, we can see the serial number and the date. Very nice, one year limited warranty, and again, you can actually hear it when I tap it against the buckle. This is metal. All right, let's take a look at what's in the roll. So, as we undo this baby. By the way, this is kind of like an, I don't wanna say evergreen, it's a, it's a bit brighter than evergreen, but like, for instance, uh, this whoop strap is like olive drab, I guess. So that's a good comparison. I'm very bad at describing colors, believe it or not. Um, okay, so first up, we have what seems to be like a Stingray strap. Uh, very nice texture. I'm not a huge Stingray leather fan. Uh, some of you guys absolutely love it, and I know they do look quite nice on dive watches, so I have a feeling this might be a dive watch, but this is a nice blue, uh, red double stitch. Then we have kind of like an old school diving strap, rubber diving strap, not quite an isoframe, but we have uh, a nice check pattern here and then some more on this side. So, you know, if you're getting hot and sweaty, uh, this will help mitigate any discomfort on your wrist, those perforations there. And then we see a nice bracelet, what seems to be like a beads of rice, but let's get close to this watch and take off some of that plastic protection, yeah? All right, so all I did was remove the watch from the watch roll and it is already taking away. We're gonna go ahead and talk about that movement in a moment, but for you freaks out there, let's get a close up. Oh yeah, oh yeah. All right, and I love it when watchmakers don't put a ton of this weird shrink wrap plastic that sticks to the bracelets. Oh wait, they did. All right, we gotta do a time lapse because uh, this is always a struggle. Let's do it. All right, well, uh, start the music because here we go. All right, that was easy enough. All right, dudes and dudettes. So here we have in our hands the Axios flagship. Now guys, right off the bat, very deep blue. And we can see that dial has a nice, almost sunburst pattern. Um, we can see that it is just very vibrant, playing with the light very nicely. And one thing that I noticed, uh, something about the bezel and the crystal, how it sits atop that bezel, and the general case shape and the whole design aesthetic kind of harkening back to like a vintage diver. Really, really like that. I can see some Zodiac in here. I can even see some older Timex diver in here. This is definite vintage aesthetic. This is not one of your modern edgy micro brand dive watches and I really like that. We can see there aren't any integrated crown guards. Um, we can see that it is on kind of a beads of rice bracelet, which also harkens back to, you know, an older time in watchmaking. We can see the bezel has very nice markings with a red triangle bordering the pip. We're gonna get a close up of that and we're gonna talk about all the functions and how the bezel feels and the crown and everything. 
Here's just my first impressions. We can see some very bold indexes, nicely bordered. Hopefully, there's a bunch of loom on there. We are getting a signed crown here. We are getting a buckle with that Axios logo. Let's see. Very positive retention there. No extra extension or anything uh, that I can see. Let's see. Nope, just your standard buckle, and that's fine. We have some micro adjustments, though, as well. You know, you gotta have those. Ooh, wait, I see a ship on the case back. We're gonna talk about that in a moment. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and measure this thing. Guys, I'm gonna tell you right now, this is a very good looking watch. This is a very, very handsome watch. Um, again, it's just screaming vintage diver, and I just, I absolutely love that. So I'm measuring it early in this episode because people have told me, oh, they wanna get those specs in immediately. So at the widest point, excluding the crown, and again, there aren't any crown guards, we are hitting, wow, 39.3, so just under 40 millimeters. That's going to make a lot of people very happy. Let's take a look at the lug to lug. 47 millimeters on the button. Let's go ahead and measure the thickness. Again, that, cr that uh, crystal is sitting very high atop that bezel, which I actually really like. 13.1 millimeters thick. Very, very nice dimensions in my opinion, but let's see how it wears on the wrist. And let's kind of talk about uh, just how much real estate this diver would take up on uh, my wrist. And then you can kind of um, stack it up against your wrist, right? We all, different shapes, different sizes, different folks for different strokes. Let's take a look. All right, so here it is, the Axios flagship on my seven and a half inch wrist. And we can see that sub 40 millimeter case diameter and that sub 50 millimeter lug to lug is very, very versatile in my opinion, as far as wearability goes. Again, my seven and a half inch wrist is, you know, a, a fairly common size. I think it's a bit above average, but it's not huge. So I think if you have anything around my sized wrist, whether it be a little larger or a bit smaller, this watch would work just fine for you. Now, there's something that I really do want to talk about, and I think we're all taking a look at it right now, that second hand incredibly smooth as it sweeps across that dial. And again, all we've done is handle the watch for a little bit. We didn't wind it. It's not tick, tick, ticking, so it's not quartz. So this must be an automatic. Let's talk about the movement. Uh-oh, I'm kind of giving something else away about this watch, that six o'clock date window, but we're gonna focus on that in just one moment. First, I wanna talk about this second hand sweeping incredibly smooth, and that's because this movement is a Miyota Premium Caliber 9015. That's right, so oftentimes we see these uh, micro brand watches utilizing things like Seiko Instruments NH35 automatics, and those are just fine workhorse movements. And the truth is I would take one of these NH35s over an entry-level Miyota, but when it comes to these premium Miotas, Man, that's a totally different story. This 9015 Premium Yoda has a 28,800 BPH sweep, giving it that nice smooth glide across that dial. I absolutely love it. 24 joules. Again, this is going to be a bit more expensive than your entry level Miyota, but we are getting a date complication. Uh, we're getting a 42 hour power reserve, and um, it is, Again, much, much better, totally different story in my opinion than the entry level Miyota. Uh, I really like that we're seeing something else, something a bit different than the Seiko Instruments NH35. And again, it's something a bit different than a Salida. So props on Axios for giving us something else. Let's talk about that date complication. Oh yeah, we're getting up real close to this baby, this six o'clock date window, man, I am stoked because no four o'clock or 4.30 date window in sight, no white date wheel. Axios took the time to give us a color matched date window, or I should say color matched date wheel to the blue dial. So that date wheel is a nice kind of matte blue to go along with the sunburst blue dial. And uh, again, it kind of seamlessly 
transitions from that blue dial into the date window without it being a kind of beacon or an eyesore. However, they did border it with that nice uh, almost off-white color and then a nice uh, steel border there so that we are getting a mirrored finish with that off-white and then again that matte blue date wheel. So it is prim and proper. It doesn't look like an afterthought. It looks very intentionally designed and it's very clean. And again, I do value symmetry. So a six o'clock date window, uh, that's perfectly fine with me. Again, no 430 date windows. That's just, ugh. I wish I wish we could just ban those. But the question remains, would it be a Microbrand Monday review if we didn't argue about the logo on the dial? Uh, we gotta do it, guys. You know, this Axios logo, I think it's really tasteful. It's kind of sleek, smooth, sharp at the same time. And they don't have the logo plus the uh, company font, right? So I think it would be a bit much if they had this logo plus Axios written on the dial. I like that they chose just to go with the Axios logo. And there's not a paragraph of text on the dial. As we move a little bit further down, we can see it just very simply says flagship 200 meters, 660 feet. So very tasteful. I think people that often complain about, you know, sports watches, specifically divers having too much text on the dial, uh, they'll be very pleased because I pretty much stand with those people. I think a lot of sports watches nowadays have just too much stuff on the dial. Let's just keep it simple. The one complaint I do have about this though is uh, I don't really like the font. The flagship font here um, just kind of looks basic and uh, just not that I want it overly stylized. I just, for some reason, someone help me in the comment section. What font is this and why don't I like it? Some, someone help me. This is just kind of a stupid, uh, subjective kind of opinion, but yeah, I wish they changed the font to something else. Another critique that I have about this Axios flagship, at least the example I have here, uh, is something I can very plainly see with my macro lens, and it's that the finishing on the handset is not perfect. We can see it's not super sharp. Uh, it is a little bit rough around the edges of that handset. Uh, the second hand looks pretty good, but the hour and the minute hand, uh, it could definitely have had a little bit more time put into them as far as uh, you know finishing up those edges. I don't know if you guys can see it at home, uh, but here on playback, I can definitely see it. Um, doesn't It's not like tool marks, it's not like burrs, but it's uh, just definitely not um, not as sharp as it could be. Now, thankfully, these big, bold indexes, they are finished very, very nicely. They're all very sharp and smooth, and uh, we can see the mirrored border around these big, bold indexes give me very high hopes that it'll play with the light nicely and glow when we need it to. Uh, so, let's do a loom test. Did someone say loom test? Let's go ahead and check it out, guys. All right, we're gonna use the torch and shine this baby up for a moment. Oh yeah, finally some great loom on Microbrand Monday. I'm not gonna, I'm not trying to talk trash, okay? But but it's very hit or miss, and lately it's been kind of miss. So I, oh, man, thank you. Thank you Axios for giving us some great loom. Look at that, Super Luminova. Uh, they did a great, great job. Um, people want me to shine the, the crowns and stuff because some watchmakers are putting loom more and more on the crowns and they've even mentioned the buckle. They want to see if the buckle glows. So, no. But I've got a bunch of requests about that lately. So, this watch does not have any loom anywhere else. I didn't expect them to. But man, the loom they do have all over the bezel, all over the indexes and the handset glows very, very nicely. Love to see it. Good job, Axios. Okie dokie, guys. So now that we've gone over, you know, the movement, we've gone over that this is stainless steel, has a 200 meter water resistance rating. Uh, let's talk about some other specs. We are getting a sapphire crystal, gorgeously vintage, almost like a box crystal sitting really high atop that bezel. Uh, but we mentioned that 200 meter water resistance rating. Let's go ahead and talk about the crown. All right, it is not a push-pull crown because I cannot get it out. So let's see if it threads. That's right, it does unthread. Fairly smooth to unthread. Let's go ahead and thread it up and see if the experience 
is similarly pleasant. Okay, so not the smoothest. Uh, it is binding a tiny bit, but it doesn't feel like gritty or anything. It doesn't feel nasty and, and unfinished. It's just uh, I have felt smoother crowns, but it does thread and unthread without any real issues. Let's go ahead, test the crown setting and function. First position. Okay, that is to hand wind. Second position. Oh wait, hold on. Here we go, that is the second position. Okay, that was my fault. When I thought I was pulling the crown out, uh, my fingernail was actually just hitting the threading. All right, so that second position allows us to cycle through the date window, very, very nice, or date wheel, I apologize. Final position, second hand stops, this does hack. So if you were to, you know, want to synchronize this watch to an external time source, whether it be your phone or another watch, you can do it down to the second utilizing that hacking function. So again, first position, we pull the crown out, hand wind, second position, date, final position, time baby. Okay, so definite clicks into place. Again, that little fudge at the uh, beginning was just my, that was operator error. My fingernail was hitting the threading when I thought that I was cycling through the crown settings. Very, very nice. Okay, so the crown works as it should. It feels decent, not the smoothest, but not the worst by far. That's gonna bother some people that uh, the day is cycling through. So let's just, okay, very, very nice. Now, let's go ahead and see what that bezel is like because again guys with these nice bezels on these nice sports watches if they're sloppy or you can't use them as a timing device what's the point so let's go ahead and test that bezel man this watch really does play with the light very nicely all right so wow no play whatsoever very tight positive ratcheting sound and feel yeah, zero, absolutely zero play. Let's line it up to that minute hand. Give it one more click, there we go. Yeah, does not back out on you, doesn't feel sloppy. It has zero play front or back. Very, very nice, love to see that. So, I do give it my stamp of approval as far as utilizing it, you know, as an actual timing device. Very, very nice. Now it's time to take a look at this case back and we see there is a little bit of protective film. If I can get it off, okay. Oh yeah, you guys love it. Let's get a close up of this, yeah? All right guys, so we can see there is a ship, you know, kind of a nice detail here. Uh, this is known as the Axios flagship. So we can see the signage around um, that case back, a screw down case back, we can see automatic Miyota 9015. This is a numbered watch. I guess this is 17 out of 150. You can see it says Axios flagship, 200 meter sapphire crystal. Now, similar complaint. Uh, I don't like the font. I don't like this font that they're using. It's just kind of, it looks like, you know, what I would use typing on my computer. I just, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of that. Is it the worst thing in the world? No, it's not like this makes me sick or anything. It's not like it would make me not want to wear the watch. It's just for some reason, that's just not pleasing to my eye. You guys can let me know in the comment section what you think would look nicer or if you just think it's perfectly fine. All right guys, so we spent an afternoon with the Axios flagship what do I think? And again, we're gonna go over the specs a little bit as a kind of a recap and then we're gonna talk about the price. Well, I think this is kind of a spec monster, right? I know that name gets thrown around, but let's talk about it. You're getting a sapphire crystal. You're getting a date complication, hacking, hand wind, a Miyota premium caliber. So you're getting that nice higher beat frequency, 28,800 BPH sweep. Uh, you're getting 
Um, again, hacking hand wind, I think I already said that. You're getting a 42 hour power reserve, 200 meter water resistance rating, a threaded crown, really nice vintage inspired design really beautiful beads of rice bracelet. Pretty decent finishing all around. The only complaints I did have were that the finishing around the hour and the minute hand were not as smooth as I got up close. And again, the crown binded up uh, a little bit upon uh, unthreading, or I should say threading. And then uh, the font, personal preference, uh, not a huge fan of that flagship font. Now, where would this fit in a collection? Well. If you were in the market for a vintage sports diver, but you wanted to be able to wear it day to day and you'd actually want to be able to wear it swimming and you wouldn't want to have to baby it, this is something I could totally see being right up your alley. Let's say that you like these really old vintage Zodiac divers and these, uh, let's say, vintage uh, Rolex divers. Again, my Rolex 16800 is technically a vintage Submariner, but it's been really well taken care of. It's been, uh, you know, up to date as far as its service intervals, and I have no issue uh, taking at taking that in the wet stuff. Excuse me. Um, but let's say you have one that's even older, like from the 60s. Yeah, dude, I would totally want to wear a more modern uh, build over like a vintage build. So this is something that could totally be up your alley. If you want something that's a bit vintage looking, but you know, modern build quality, just instills confidence. Um, now, let's stack it up against the price because again, good specs, great design, $4.99, okay? So just under 500 bucks. What do I think of that? Well, again, premium Miyota caliber, it's not one of these entry Miyota movements, and you are getting a really nice design, and it is a very handsome watch. However, there are a whole lot of watches you can get for that $500 price range. Um, again, Orient has a lot of very, very capable sports watches below that price range. Now, they don't have the same vintage aesthetic whatsoever. They're, they're very much more modern divers. So if you're interested in that whole aesthetic, I think this is something I would definitely approve of. Not that you need my approval, but I could definitely recommend this. Uh, but I would love to hear what you guys think. I mean, what do you think of the specs? What do you think of the package altogether? How did they pull it off? And are you a fan of this kind of older, simple aesthetic, uh, leave me that comment. I'd love to hear from you. So guys, I wanna thank all my viewers for checking this episode out. Again, we film every day here on the Time Teller channel and uh, what's a channel without a viewer? So thank you. Thank you to my channel members for literally making it possible for us to film every day. And uh, thank you to Axios for sending in this watch for review. You know, Microbrand Monday has been an incredibly successful segment on this channel and uh, it would literally be nowhere if these uh, watchmakers did not support us. So we thank them for their support. And uh, yeah, guys, again, there's a whole lot of ways to support the channel. Uh, there's my personal website. There's all the affiliate links in the description below. Um, there's channel memberships that when you join the channel for $4.99 a month, you get extra content and access to the members only Discord chat. But the easiest way to support the channel is just to keep doing what you're doing and watching the content. Guys, I love you. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. And always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. Yeah, yeah, yeah.